Ladies and gentlemen, if you know anything about chess, then you probably know the names Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura, and that's because they are the two most handsome and also most popular chess players on the planet. And we don't get to see them play against each other a lot because they're prize fighters. They don't just boot up chess.com and play 50 blitz games against one another like you and I would, but rather we see them play in elite competitions. And recently we've been seeing them play a lot, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a game that they played yesterday, which as always is a certified banger. It goes platinum, it is a uh, FDA approved, it is, I mean, it is non-GMO organic. I mean, these games are absolutely spectacular. And yesterday's Blitz game was so fun. I mean, these guys just somehow provide an entertaining quality to all of their games and, and you love to see it. So first of all, Magnus was, uh, despite playing with the black pieces in this game, Magnus played all of Title Tuesday playing H4 on move one and H5 move one with black. Like Magnus spent the entirety of the tournament playing that, but then Hikaru hits the man with A3. So Hikaru really re recently has just been playing A3 against Magnus, which is hilarious because this is like the stuff that Magnus does to people. Hikaru doesn't let him do it to him. Now, uh, like a week or two ago, I made a video where Magnus played the move C5. By the way, the board might be a little bit glitchy. Uh, that's because chess.com is at like peak capacity right now. I made a video about it yesterday. Don't worry about it. Um, and then in that game, Hikaru played E4. In this game, Hikaru, uh, rather Magnus plays E5. So now Hikaru does the mirror image, which is so funny. I mean, there's probably no better move against uh, E5 right now than playing something like C4 and playing in English because in this move order it actually makes sense. But it's so funny that like they just keep mirror imaging each other with C5 and E4. Anyway, Magnus plays Knight F6, uh, Hikaru plays this, and we're actually in what's called a reverse Sicilian defense. So like it looks like black is playing white with E4, C5, and now we're kind of like in a Knight Orf. So if Magnus plays the move D5 in this position, Hikaru would capture on d5, and then we would get knight captures on d5, and it looks like it's a knight or Sicilian, except white is playing black and black is playing white. So that doesn't happen. Magnus tries to take advantage of the move order and play d5. We have knight f3, and Magnus blunders a pawn on move four. Just kidding. What is the problem with playing knight takes pawn? What do you always need to look for in chess? Very good. Checkmate, free p checks, captures, attacks. So if you take knight takes pawn, black has two checks in this position. One is stupid, it loses a bishop. The other one is queen a5, and that hits these two pieces, and you lose a knight. Shockingly, Hikaru didn't blunder a piece in five moves. He played bishop g5, h6, went back, and developed his pieces as follows. Magnus played bishop e6, Hikaru finished his development with the move knight c3, and in this position, uh, rather than just kind of slow playing with castles, uh, Hikaru decided to attack the center right away with the move d4. So, Magnus and Hikaru clashing, sorry if I hit the microphone, in the center of the board. Very tense position. What is black going to do? Well, this trade looks fair to you because it's one pawn for one pawn, but all pawn trades have a winner and a loser. Most trades have a winner and a loser. In this case, it would be Magnus who is the loser because the knight hits the bishop, so Hikaru is threatening to gain the bishop pair, and the d-file will remain open, so the queen will have long-term pressure on the pawn. White would not take back in the center with the queen or the pawn uh, because the queen would be a target for the black pieces, and if you take with the pawn, it would block your d-file. I hope that makes sense. So... Magnus instead keeps the tension like this. This looks like it like might trap the bishop, but it won't. The bishop can just move here. So Hikaru plays rook c1. Magnus goes here and now castles. Okay, so both sides have completed their development. They've castled. They've moved some pawns. What now, right? Isn't this the hardest part of the game? This is the game where you probably get out of your opening prep that you learned in one of my videos and go, well, now what, right? Yeah, that's chess. I mean, sometimes the game can have like 15 different combinations, permutations, simulations, emulations, stimulation. I don't know. I'm just, I'm going nuts uh, for both players. Okay. And um, you don't really know what's going to happen, right? So Magnus plays bishop g4. Okay. Now Hikaru can do a million different things here. 
He can target the bishop, he can move the queen, he can bring the rook. He decides to go here and basically trade the bishops, right? Like he wants to reroute his knight. The problem is, this is kind of a step backwards for the white position, and Magnus just immediately capitalizes. So he takes the pawn on d4, because if you will remember, white's entire idea was to take in the center with the knight. So by doing this, it's actually helped black more than it's helped white, and Magnus takes on d4 right away, because now Hikaru's gonna have to recapture with the pawn. Hikaru is not going to take the bishop on g4, because after this, and a long sequence of moves, uh, black will emerge on top. So we have this, Magnus trades, and Hikaru plays queen takes. But see, this trade, like I said, not all trades are equal. This trade benefited black. Why did it benefit black? Because it's now black's move, and he's able to seize central space right away. Black was very passive earlier. Uh, this also creates a threat of hitting the queen. So Hikaru is going to have to move the queen again, which is a waste of time for the white position because only black has made improvements. So uh, against bishop g4, Hikaru probably should have played something mildly more energetic than knight d2. Is he losing? No. But black has a very pleasant position and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure Hikaru wasn't too thrilled with the outcome of this. But he plays queen to d3 and this transformation is also an improvement for black because now he has play against what's called an isolated pawn. Isolated pawn does not have neighbors on C and E, and to successfully play against an isolated pawn, you need to control the square in front of it, which is that square, otherwise it will move forward, and trading pieces helps. So now Magnus takes advantage of the obscure coordination of this queen, which came out like this, and like this, and he plays knight C5. So Magnus is slowly taking over, and as you'll notice, it's now a 30 second time discrepancy, which is a lot. It's like 25% of the allotted time bank, right? Knight c5, you cannot take it. You cannot take it because of this. So now Hikaru's gotta move his queen again. It goes back to its home square. Not a good sign. All right, Magnus is now taking over. He plays knight to e6. The square in front of the pawn is blockaded. This pawn is a big weakness. Now, if white plays very passively, what black will do is probably trade off the bishop. So he might play knight d5, Bishop takes, and even Rook takes is fine, but the point is, you're blocking the square in front of Hikaru's pawn, you're not letting it move forward, and you're gonna build behind it as you slowly apply pressure and ultimately win the pawn, and ultimately win the game, right? So Hikaru's gotta act now, and he knows that, and Hikaru is so good at snapping out of a series of bad moves mid-game, I've, he's probably the best player on earth at doing that, like, Hikaru will play a few moves and visibly get upset at himself for playing those moves, but he won't get mad at, like, it's not going to affect his future moves. He has this switch that he can flip mid-game, sometimes mid-streak of moves, and he just, right now, he takes on f6, so he gets rid of the blockading piece, and he shoves the pawn forward, so he begins complicating matters. He's like, Magnus, you want to beat me? I'm 40 seconds down, and the game is completely trending out of the direction that I want it to, and I'm still going to find a way to take over. Now, Magnus takes on d5. Okay, now, if Hikaru were to play queen takes, Magnus would probably take the knight first, Hikaru would probably take this, and then he would take this, and then he would take this, and Magnus would probably just be annoying. He would play knight d4 and try to play rook e2, and um, so queen takes d5 is a possibility, but there is also, like, you know, he could take this way. Hikaru does it this way. He takes with the knight, Magnus plays bishop d4, and now we have knight c e3, and it looks like white is doing very well. But why did Hikaru give up the b2 pawn, right? Well, if he tried to hang on to all his pieces, black would have played b5, and that would have been devastating. Because not only would Hikaru lose one pawn, he would probably lose both and just be two pawns down for nothing. So what does Hikaru do? He starts creating chaos. Despite being down to his last minute, bishop takes b2, rook b1, bishop a3, down two pawns, but now he gets b7. So now Hikaru's only down one pawn. Now, admittedly, it's an extremely annoying pawn. It's an outside pass pawn. It is a pawn on the opposite side of the board that the white pieces basically cannot deal with. So knowing that you are going to have to deal with that pawn in the long run, white needs to play fast, okay? Hikaru understands that. What does that mean, play fast? That means create threats right now. Make black think about something. Because let me tell you something right now. Magnus is gonna go here and literally push this pawn. He has a very powerful piece which controls the entire board on a diagonal. These knights are stupid and drunkenly stumbling over one another. All right, long knight at the bar. And this pawn's just gonna walk. So Hikaru plays queen h5, all right? Only man, I think, on the planet who can stand up to Magnesian-style play as it's happening. Queen, h5. 
Magnus defends against queen takes f7. I'm not even sure how many of you saw that move. And in this position, Hikaru plays a move that I, I really, like if I gave Grandmasters in the world an opportunity to play a move here, I'm not sure, it, like, I mean, it is such a high level move. It completely puts White's plans on hold and only looks at what does Magnus want? What does Black want here? Now, a lot of you are gonna say, no, these guys know how to do time and space and harmony all together with their pieces. So you know what they're gonna do here? Black is going to play the move. Let's say White goes rookie one. Black wants this. That is what Black wants, to get rid of the aggressor in White's position, trade this off, and now free reign. And now the white pieces are gonna have to go play defense and they're just not fast enough. So Hikaru plays queen h5 and follows it up with h4, which is not an attacking move. It looks like it, but it's not. It prevents queen g5. But look at his time. Last, last, last move, he had 56 seconds. He spent almost all, half his time on that move, literally. 29 seconds he plays h4. Magnus responds with the best move, offering an exchange to Hikaru's rook. Hikaru's got a swap, and he plays knight to f5, right? I told you, Hikaru needs to play quickly, energetically. I'm telling you, this is an insane game. Standing up to Magnus, you cannot take this because I have knight e7, which is a fork. It's not even that I'm winning your queen by discover check. It's literally a fork. So the amazing kind of... Brother, brotherhood of the horses, you know? Knight F5 sounds like a, you know, some sort of like chapter of House of the Dragon. Brotherhood of the horses. Uh, knight F5, Knight D5, all going down this way. Sacrifice is looming. Magnus plays King H7, holding on to both pawns. And Hikaru activates his rook and suddenly he's back in the game. All right? He has stood up to Magnus. Now Magnus once again plays the best move. Like, all of these pieces standing around, looking like there's threats on the queen. Magnus plays the best move. You know what the best move here for black is, folks? with the rook staring down at your queen and, you know, all your pieces under fire. The best move is the absolutely cold-blooded a5. That is the best move. Basically asking Hikaru, what do you got? Let's go. Let's go. Let's fight. You want to you you fight? Let's go. A5. A5, and I'm just going to push my pawn. Hikaru has basically three or four turns until absolute disaster. So where's the win? Magnus's king is completely protected. How is Hikaru going to pull this off? By playing the top engine move himself, queen g4. Do you know what that does? That prevents the pawn from moving forward. Oh my god. He is attacking and he is defending at the same time. He's taken his eye off this and this, but now he's got eyes on g7. So he might play knight f4. He might go here, get rid of the knight, and then take on... Oh my god. So Magnus plays queen c8. And Hikaru here plays a ridiculous move. Knight f6 check! Nine seconds on the clock. The idea of knight f6 is that after pawn takes, it's queen h5, it's queen h6, it's knight e7 mate. But there is a top engine move here for Magnus to play defense with. One of them is completely ridiculous. Uh, the other one is the move queen c5. Defending the e7 square against the knight and threatening this. But with just 10 seconds on the clock, roughly, for both players as time is ticking, Magnus thinks it's too risky and plays king back to h8. It is 9 seconds versus 12. Now, Hikaru could continue to bulldoze with knight h6 and so on. He plays queen h5. All right, now the knight on f6 is completely untouchable, but queen h5 is a massive mistake because Hikaru should have played faster. Now, maybe he thought, you know, a draw was not good enough. He could have tried to force a draw here. If g takes h6, he can go here, and there is a perpetual check, but he decides to play queen h5, and Magnus finds defense from across the board. Queen down to c2. Oh, God. Imagine getting hit with this move from Magnus Carlsen with seven seconds on the clock. He's threatening queen f2. He's got eyes on this. He's got eyes on this. He's got eyes on that in the future if he wants it. What does Hikaru do? Cold-blooded, rook f1. Played instantly, didn't even lose a second. Rook f1 just playing defense. Magnus once again plays the best move, queen d2. Completely controlling the white rook and also defending h6 so pawn takes knight becomes a possibility. What does Hikaru do? Knight back to e4. They both, with one second on the clock, Hikaru plays knight e4. One second on the clock, knight e4 is on the board. How does he have enough time to even make a move? Magnus plays queen f4. Queen f4 hits this. What does Hikaru do? Knight comes back to g3. Now black is completely winning. Hikaru just barely avoiding time, but queen hitting the pawn on the other side of the board. In this position, Magnus's best move 
is F5, utilizing the free space where the knight just was. That attacks the knight, and there's really loud dirt bikes outside. Oh my goodness. Oh my, I'm, I'm gonna just say this right now. If you got a car that loud, you're just a terrible person. That's all, you know, I'm just, nobody likes you, really. Now, if you have a car that's like quieter, you're great, you're loved, of course. Um, now, if knight c3, queen takes g3, and the bishop pins the pawn to the king, f5 would have been it. But with this little time on the clock, you're basically making quick moves in your head. So you're seeing queen hits pawn, no problem, a4, and Hikaru, again, with no time on the clock, finds queen a5, which is a fork, but black is still winning. But he's only winning if he finds a bishop move, giving up the pawn, and once again, this f5 idea. Magnus, it all comes down to this f5 idea, prying the fingers apart. All right, prying the hands apart as they hold on to the edge of the cliff like in Lion King. E4, G3, right? But Magnus misses it and plays this, thinking Hikaru's gonna take the pawn, but in a catastrophic time scramble mistake, he's blundered his bishop. Now he finds F5, but he had to find it a move earlier. But now they're both down to one in two seconds. Hikaru, knight C5 on the board. Magnus can play queen d4 here, pinning the knight to the queen, complete chaos. White would have had to find queen e7, unpinning and hitting both. But instead of that, we have knight f4, and Hikaru just takes. This is not mate, because knight takes knight, and in this position, Magnus ran out of time, but he's also just losing, he's down to knight. Oh my goodness. These two provide such high quality games, even with no time on the clock. Like. Their openings, once we get past them, once we get past this A3 business, um, they play such high-level chess, like the tension in the position, right? Hikaru looking to simplify, Magnus taking over the initiative, playing against the isolated pawn, Hikaru blowing the position open so that his isolated pawn is not a liability, finding these ridiculous measures to sacrifice material and understanding time, space, harmony, boom, queen h5, playing quickly h4. h4 is the move of the game, as far as I'm concerned. Like... Such a ridiculously high-level move, understanding that Black wants to trade the Queen and fight back, and he spent all his time on it. Magnus, also a high-level defense, A5, and it ultimately comes down to this absurd time scramble, and Hikaru, I mean, just a, a just ridiculous vision. Amazing. And then obviously, I mean, you blunder with four seconds on the clock, it happens. So, Hikaru's gotten the better of Magnus several games in a row now in these title Tuesdays, and let me know if you enjoyed the videos. I mean, on the one hand, um... I don't want to make a video about every game Hikaru and Magnus play against each other. On the other hand, you all enjoy watching and, you know, views. So, at the end of the day, I'm a content creator. You offer me 400,000 or 800,000 views, I'm going to go with the 800,000. You know what I'm saying? So, you guys let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.